Hi guys, thank you for joining Wine Geometry. This is my channel. I'm your host for the evening and for all the shows to come. My name is Sylvain Gamard. I'm a 28 year old, half French, half American, and uh, I'm just a wine lover after all. So uh, I just wanted to start this channel. This is my first video to share my passion about wine with you guys. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, my goal with you guys is triple. Uh, first of all, I really want to help you uh, learn more about wine and how to taste. So every week we're going to be um, tasting some wine. Uh, not several wines, but actually just one wine that I'm going to choose. Uh, it'll be the occasion to introduce a new country, a new region of wine that maybe you haven't expected. So I'm going to go new world and old world. When I'm talking about new world, it's going to be something like Australia, New Zealand, or even China for that matter. Whereas old world, of course, is more classic wines like uh, France with Bordeaux, Burgundy wines, uh, or Ita Italy wines, Spain wines, and so on. So let's get started. This week I brought a special wine from New Zealand. Uh, don't worry, I didn't go to New Zealand actually. I bought it here in one of the best places in the world, which is Singapore. Um, so I brought this over for you guys today. We'll see together what it's worth. Um, I'm going to taste the wine first, and show you how to taste it so that you can know, have maybe better knowledge about uh, trying wine in the future. And then I'm going to give my comments, maybe give some uh, context and give maybe some specialist notes um, that have been already tasting this wine in the past. So let's get started. All right, so this is a Felix Vineyard Pinot Noir 2011. So when you're looking at Pinot Noir, uh, you're looking at Burgundy wines usually. That's the a grape that's specialized for Burgundy. It's kind of universal, right? So if you don't know what to bring to a party, for example, you're definitely going to bring a Burgundy Pinot Noir. That's kind of like the basic stuff, uh, as opposite to uh, Bordeaux, which is Cabernet Sauvignon based, which would be much more tannic, which would be much more difficult to appreciate by especially beginners. Uh, so you'd probably be uh, more enthusiastic towards a Pinot Noir. All right, so since this looks like a really nice bottle and I bought it on purpose, I'm going to bring Ta -da! the special cork opener. So, how does it work? Oh no, actually it's just a cork. It's not a cork, it's just a screw. Sucks, doesn't it? But does that really mean it's not a good wine? No. Actually, if you look at this blog page, you'll see that it's not all in the cork or in the screw. All the New World wines are mostly actually made of screw now. You look at Australian wines, you look at uh, New Zealand wines, South Africa, Chile wines, it's okay. The difference between a cork and a screw is the micro-oxygenation that the wine is going to get during that phase after being in an oak barrel. After an oak barrel, it's going to be put under the cork for 18 months, and in that case, there will be this kind of micro-oxygenation which will let go through a special, let's say, a kind of woody, leathery, oaky uh, smell and taste, which in the case of stainless steel screws, you won't have it all. So this is just the pure wine, the pure Pinot Noir at its best. So there's no real negative or positive aspects of using screw uh, against cork where there was a sort of cliche uh, before, let's say a few years ago, that screw uh, wines had to be cheap and not uh, good quality. So let's give it a try. All right, so how do we try wine first? First, you always want to give it a swirl, all right? You want to give the wine a swirl so that it can completely breathe, all right? Always, after opening a wine, actually, usually you should open the wine a bit 30 minutes uh, before you're going to actually drink it. it should, so it should take the room temperature, but it should be somewhere about 16 to 90 degree, 19 degrees uh, if you're with a red wine. So you swirl it so that it can uh, bring out all the aromas, all the flavors, before actually smelling it and tasting it. So the first one, thing you want to do once you've swirled it enough, all right, you want to hold the glass like this. You can hold the glass like this if your red, red wine is too cold. You can actually do this to heat it up, okay? So once you've swirled it enough, you put your nose in. Yes, all right. You give it a, a nice hard smell. This is a real Pinot Noir, 
very universal. Uh, it's got sweet taste. Okay, it's when I say sweet, it's still a dry wine. No worries. Uh, we're not talking about uh, a really like sugary wine, but we have those sweet notes. Uh, here we're talking about uh, red berries, uh, something, uh, some kind of strawberry skins. Uh, there's a small uh, light alcohol taste, but you can't really feel it that much. So we're looking at something very pleasant. Uh, maybe a springy taste. So it's, it's you know when I say springy taste, it's uh, usually you walking in the woods or walking in fields during spring, right? With some fresh, fresh uh, cut grass, uh, a kind of light atmosphere. So now let's give it a taste. So you always want to keep it in your mouth for a little bit before actually swallowing it. So you want to make a kind of you like kind of sucking it in to really get it in your mouth, get it up in the palate over there. And then to reach the complexity of the aromas. When I say complexity, I mean uh, trying to reach what notes, what flavors uh, we're getting in the mouth. Okay. So the more different kinds of flavors you have, the more complex it is. Okay. And then in terms of length, Right now, it's still actually going on in my mouth. It's really succulent, it's amazing. Um, the longer it is, most likely the better it is, especially if you have a good taste, right? You don't want a long wine if it's not a good taste in the beginning, right? This is a really nice wine, honestly. Uh, for the price it is, uh, got it at 35 Singapore dollars. I think it's really worth it. Uh, super universal, so I mean, really great to drink uh, any, um, dinner with friends, bring it a party, you can't, you can't miss it. It's really, uh, it's really a go. I would certainly recommend it to anybody. Yeah, and as I said, really kind of a light atmosphere. Um, you can eat with pretty much everything, you know, as any Burgundies or any Pinot Noir uh, grapes. Um, I'd probably eat it uh, more with light red meat uh, or with pork, uh, something like that. Uh, not with dessert because it's already got this kind of mm, sweetness into it. Maybe some light, um, let's say, uh, light uh, crust cheese, probably something like that. Um, the importance of the wine for me is also always to associate it with songs and with meals, okay? So I want you to get a taste of that as well. Um, step by step, you're going to learn that every wine has its own atmosphere, right? And of course that has a personal taste, but I'm here to tell you that there are some associations of wines that go with this kind of songs or this kind of meals. So in terms of uh, songs that I, would, that I would go with, I'd go with something rock and roll here. because here you've got a versatile wine, kind of uh, slow in the beginning, but it gets stronger at the end. Uh, you're, you're, you're looking at something like classic uh, rock and roll music. Um, if you look actually at this YouTube channel, uh, you're going to find some of the musics that correspond uh, to, uh, let's say, Pinot Noir grapes or, let's say, to this kind of wine. Uh, as for the meal, I just said, uh, go for definitely uh, light red meat, uh, something thin, or go for a pork, yeah, or some cheese that is not too strong. So uh, let's say an entry level uh, cheese, not those blue cheese in it, etc. Yeah. So uh, that's the wine of the week, uh, and as we say, a wine a week keeps your palate unique. So now is the time for the rating. Everybody tries to rate wines, uh, you know, around the world, try to name themselves specialists. And a wine score is supposed to make uh, subjectivity actually objective, right? But it's still a personal taste, so you're going to find very uh, different appreciations between different people. Uh, this is to say that uh, for this wine, for example, this Pinot Noir from uh, New Zealand, it received a 93 points out of 100, so 100 is kind of that international uh, score guide. 93 points is supposed to be excellent. So from a guy named Bob Campbell in uh, New Zealand, he was probably a bit too patriotic, I would say, because um, 
I wouldn't give it a 93 points on that scale, even though I don't like that scale. Um, for me, I rate more on 20 points. Uh, first of all, because I'm French, and you know, in grades in school, we used to have our grades out of 20, right? So it makes more sense to me. Uh, and I think the criteria is more leveled out of 20. Uh, out of 100, it's difficult to give less than an 80. Uh, and you know, I mean, 80 out of 100 is supposed to be good, right? So for me, uh, I give out of 20, and I base on five criteria. The first is no default, uh, or a sort of balance. No default, it means uh, it shouldn't have uh, a too strong alcohol uh, hint in the, in the smell or in the taste or after the swallow. Um, it should really have a sort of balance between the acid and the sweet taste. Uh, the grape should have really uh, gotten um, mature enough, but not too much, and it has not gotten too ripe. Uh, so I think that that's the first criteria that I base uh, out of four points. The second is the smell. So it's the second step. Once you understood that there's no default, you get the smell and you start uh, enjoying the smell. Then you'll have the taste itself. So taste is uh, before swallow, after swallow, um, also on four points. Um, and then I would judge depth and length. So depth is the complexity of um, the aromas, as I was mentioning earlier. And the length is how long it stays in in your palate and how long you can actually enjoy it. Because at the end of the day, I mean, whether you like it or not, wine is pleasure. You have to enjoy it. So that thing that's in your mouth and that you're enjoying so much, you know, it's all, we always say that uh, all good things come to an end, but you want it to come to an end as far as possible from now, right? So that's how I grade it as well. That's why I call the whole thing wine geometry, because at the end of the day, it's a geometry. It's a triangle between balance, which is pretty geometric, length, and depth. So actually, in my sense, you can kind of make it uh, a bit of a science more than uh, an art or something that just uh, every person appreciates. So uh, all in all, uh, I really liked uh, the taste of it. I think it was really nice. Uh, the smell was a little bit, um, let's say, uh, I'll exaggerate a little bit, but a little bit of uh, some uh, cigarette uh, leftover that is a bit cold, um, mixed with a sweet, uh, sweet taste, so uh, I'll give it a little minus for that. Uh, otherwise, really good, um, after swallow nice, and nice uh, length. Uh, depth, I would say, pretty classic, uh, based on all the Pinot Noirs that I've tried. Um, springy taste, very lively, very light. Um, so all in all, I would give it around a 14 or a 15 out of 20, which is in the good zone, uh, not in the excellent zone, but in the good zone, especially for this kind of price range at around $30, $35 a bottle. So uh, to buy this bottle in Singapore, because that's also what I want to do, I want to help you guys uh, in Singapore where I live, uh, be able to purchase good wines, and I think this is a good wine, I really think that you should try it out and pair it with uh, the songs that I mentioned earlier, or the meals that I did. So right here you can find um, the different songs and the different um, meals that you can pair it with and right here you can see where to buy it and you can click on it. So enjoy!